Okay, here we are with the uh, the used uh, coolant hose for the uh, front cylinder that we bought off of eBay. We took it in and uh, put it in a bucket with uh, hot soap and dishwater, and we got a used toothbrush, and we scrubbed the inside of it and flushed it as well as we could uh, because it had old uh, crystallized coolant and God knows what else inside it. And uh, we inspected this end real closely because um, this is where they fail. Uh, if you look at the end of the one that failed, you can see they used the wrong kind of hose clamp and it dug into the thing uh, all the way around and of course this is where it failed right up here. So the clamp that came with this thing uh, when it's cinched up all the way uh, has enough smooth uh, part that it covers up uh, these little uh, serrations in the clamp. The best, but this thing will still dig into the into the hose and uh, that's the one that came off this used hose and you can see what it's done to the hose. This is on the bottom side and the top side uh, where it bends right here is where it's going to fail. Actually that's real close to the failure point so they really put the clamp in the wrong place. What you can see when you look in here is that this hose gets gets tired. It gets weak right at this point where it's clamped and bent and it's really not uh, a very good design. El Honda got the angle wrong and uh, if they'd angled the, uh, if they'd made this casting with a slightly different angle this hose wouldn't have to have this compound bend in it. It would take a lot of strain off it. So uh, this one you can see, this is the one that came with the used hose, how much crust there are, is on here. Part of this corrosion, part of this is crystallized uh, um, coolant. But it makes you wonder what they were using for coolant in that, that machine. This is not from my motorcycle. Mine is not crusty like this. But if you don't use distilled water and... Uh, the proper uh, antifreeze with uh, corrosion inhibitors, uh, you're going to have trouble. And that's probably one of the reasons that motorcycle died. And we've got its uh, parts. But I didn't want any of that kind of crud on the, hidden on the inside of this tube, so I scrubbed it inside as far as I could get from both ends with uh, a toothbrush, hot water, and uh, dish soap and then rinsed it real well. So we're going to go put it together now. Um, I guess we're going to have to use these clamps. The best clamp uh, that there is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's an AeroQuip uh, clamp for aircraft or a better automotive kind of clamp, but it has two ends that come around with a screw uh, all the way through it that tightens it, and a smooth band all the way around the circumference of the hose. And uh, that's by far the best uh, situation in terms of not, to, not destroying the hose with the clamp. Just for comparison, here's my old hose, which failed mechanically because it had the wrong kind of clamp. But if you look inside it, you'll see that there's not a bunch of, if I can do this, not a bunch of mineral buildup and crust in it, uh, like there was in this other tube. And uh, <clears throat> these have not been cleaned. This is the ends, the failed end of mine. And... Um, it's, you just don't see the, much junk in there. So uh, that's what happens when you use uh, good coolant and uh, do it right and not to some Joe McGee uh, Flatlander shit with, uh, uh, you know, some goofy water from Flint, Michigan in it. All right, beating a dead horse, I want you to look at the difference between these clamps. See how this clamp is smooth? almost all the way around and when you tighten it up on the hose it's going to be smooth all the way around on the inside. Now look at this son of a bitch. This is the fucker that destroyed that hose. And that's, a, that's the stupid thing that came off of there. 
And if you're going to put one of these things on your motorcycle, you're going to get what you get. A great big puddle around your feet and a dead motorcycle on the side of the road. You've got any crust on that nipple on the, uh, uh, the cylinder fitting? Take a scotch Bright pad like this and put it in there and clean it up before you put your hose back on. Well here I am, and this is kind of like proctology. I'm doing this by feel. I got my hand in there with my finger on the bottom side of that fitting where I can feel roughness. And I got a piece of this green uh, stuff in my hand with my middle finger and I'm just scrubbing away at it until I feel that fucker is smooth. And uh, if you don't pay attention to these details, you're wasting your time doing this. Okay, to get this hose in, you've got to feed the bent end in through this side and push it through, get it turned around, and then, then you'll get your connectors on it, your uh, clamps on it later. But you've got to feed it through this side. You can't do it the other way. Okay, my friend uh, Scott Duncan in uh, Lake Isabella, who's a great uh, motorcycle restorer, suggested I put a little bit of silicone grease on these fittings just to make the... Uh, tubes go on easily and uh, this happens to be uh, a Teflon lubricant but it's uh, a pretty benign uh, stuff uh, you know it's, it's food grade rated so uh, I think it's not going to hurt anything at all we'll just use a little film of it on there just to make these uh, tubes uh, slide on there easily so you can see that this uh, this uh, what do you call it uh, clamp has to be on the, the bottom side so when when you end up tightening it up <coughs> the tightener ends up to be down here there's no there's no clearance up above there it's very tight for that engine cover or whatever the hell that is so uh, we'll put it on the bottom so we can get a screwdriver on it easily so we had to use a pair of pliers to slip this on the nipple here but because we had that lubricant in there uh, it went on very well. We're going to leave this loose because we've got to twist and position this other tube and try to take all the stress off of that uh, fitting on the cylinder that we can so that it doesn't fail. Well when you're sticking your lubricated finger in this tube and twirling it around uh, you'll have a chance to decide whether or not this is gynecology or proctology depending on whether the guy who did this wrong before you uh, was an asshole or a pussy. Even though you can't reach your hand in from the right side, uh, you can inspect it from the right side. And uh, so if you're having trouble seeing how far the hose is pushed up on the fitting, uh, you know, you're going to do it by feel, but you can get over here on this right side and look at it too. You're going to uh, have to kink this hose uh, and bend it in the middle in order to get it on that uh, fitting. But uh, if you use that, uh, that lubricant first on the inside of the, the hose and on the fitting, it will slide right on there and uh, that will probably save your knuckles. Now we get back to the fun part again, uh, which is going to be trying to align this hose as well as we can to um, take as much strain off of it as we can and not to uh, minimize the sharp bend that Honda engineered into it. And then we go through the laborious uh, uh, quarter turn at a time tightening of that um, hose clamp on there. And uh, you just have to uh, uh, struggle through it. You'll get it. Okay, one of the things you've got to do um, is uh, gauge the position of the tube on the nipple. And you're going to use the fact that the hose is flexible to help you do that. You're going to put your hand in there and you're going to get to the very end of the tube and work your way backwards, pushing on the tube with your finger. Uh, and it'll be hard and won't move uh, where the nipple is inserted in the pipe. And when you get to the edge of the pipe, it'll get soft and you can feel it. So you want to also, you can feel the groove uh, that's in the... Uh, it's in the pipe if you've got a used one like this. And that's where your clamp is going to be. And you want to make sure that there's uh, a good bit of distance between 
where that clamp is and the bitter end of the tube. You don't want to be trying to clamp the, uh, the pipe uh, where there isn't anything underneath it. So you got to get that position right. And uh, maybe you can see that this uh, clamp has run way, way back on the tube. You've got to make the uh, clamp loose enough to be able to slip over the fat part of the tube and work up there and then you got to tighten it up again. If your clamp is too tight it won't slide over uh, the hump uh, where it's been clamped previously. So uh, you just have to get it loose enough so it'll slide over there and then tighten it up once it's in there. Uh, remember these in my case were 8 millimeter so I have an 8 millimeter socket on this handle. Uh, I've got this little uh, universal which can go on the end of the uh, the handle and plug into the socket so I can work at it at a weird angle. I got the box wrench which is how I got it to, uh, off and tightened before and uh, I've got a socket but I don't believe the socket's uh, going to be able to work in there but it uh, it might with the extension. So anyway we're going to use those three things to, uh, to uh, tighten it up. Um, this thing has a, uh, a Phillips head in it as well uh, and if you can get the screwdriver in there, uh, you can uh, use that uh, as well. Well, I lied to you as I so often will in these videos. These uh, new clamps that I'm using, which may be the original Honda clamps, I'm not sure, are 6 millimeter, not 8. And I don't know if I possess a 6 millimeter box wrench. I certainly have the, have the socket. So it's uh, going to get interesting. Okay, so what we're doing to tighten this up is we're using a six millimeter socket with the universal and then we've got a just a straight handle on there, but if you had an extension and a quarter inch uh, ratchet that would work fine. Uh, I've got a screwdriver jammed in underneath the bottom of the clamp and the reason for that is to get the clamp loose enough to slip over this fat part right here you have to get the clamp pretty loose. And then when you get it over here, uh, it, this has already been compressed and then the, the uh, clamp will flop around. And just the weight of this uh, socket and handle uh, was enough to make it slide down so I couldn't, uh, couldn't tighten it. So I just jammed this screwdriver handle under there just so the, uh, the uh, clamp wouldn't rotate. And uh, remember the last time this thing broke because it had been brutalized by a clamp. Uh, probably been over tightened and they used the wrong kind of clamp with a lot of this serrated stuff against the metal. So I've just snugged this up. Not very tight. And I'm going to put uh, coolant in there and fire it up. And if it doesn't leak, I think I'm going to let it be. Um, there's a, remember there's a raised part uh, on the nipple and the clamp is on the back side of it. So as long as the clamp is tight enough that it can't slide over that raised part, the tube can't come off. And I think this fat raised part on the, on the nipple is really uh, what keeps it from leaking. So um, I'm going to test my theory here, but what I want to avoid is over tightening this hose, weakening it and making it fail prematurely. So anyway, that, uh, oops, I'm talking to nothing. So anyway, I used the, uh, the handle of a screwdriver to keep this uh, uh, clamp from slipping down under the weight of the, uh, of the wrench. And I'm tightening it with a six millimeter socket, a universal on a straight, uh, straight handle shaft. But if you had a long extension and a quarter inch uh, ratchet, like this one, you could use that instead. But this is uh, far superior to trying to get in there with a little box wrench and break your nuzzle, knuckles. And it also gives you a much better feel on how you're tightening it. Um, you remember there's a uh, there's a raised uh, uh, ring around this um, uh, nipple that the, plug, that the uh, tube slides over. 
and as long as the clamp is on the the inside of that raised nipple and tight enough to keep the tube from fall, falling off, I think that's probably tight enough. I think the the stopping the leak comes from the uh, uh, the uh, the hose tension around that raised nipple and a little bit of tension on this clamp. But I don't think you have to tighten it very tight, and I think if you do, you raise the uh, uh, you risk uh, damaging the uh, uh, the hose and having it fail prematurely, like just happened. So when you're all done in here, uh, don't forget to take this little uh, fan wire and put it back in its clip. Uh, make sure you haven't left any uh, tools in there, like the flashlight that's illuminating this right now. Take another look at your uh, hose and your clamp. I'm going to reach in there and give a good yank on it, just to make sure it's solid and it tilts the whole bike and it ain't pulled off it must be okay. So what we're going to do now is put uh, coolant back in the motorcycle, uh, run it, burp it, and check for leaks. It's a handy little flashlight I got on sale at Cycle Gear for 12 bucks. Uh, it's got a magnet in the end. It's got a light on the side as well. Oh, come on. Oh, it's smart enough to work a flashlight. It's got uh, this light on the side, which is very handy. So I just shoved this thing in the hole and used that light on the side for illumination in there, which was very successful. Okay, when you refill your system, try not to be a sloppy old fuck like I was and spill it, even though I used a funnel. Uh, I had to take a paper towel and go around and wipe uh, everything underneath the uh, uh, the fairings, around the radiator, the hoses, uh, anywhere. Uh, because there was coolant dripping out of this for days, it was caught on the edge of the fairings because the thing's on a side stand. So you want to get all of that uh, coolant cleaned up uh, so that if you find drips of coolant or a leak of coolant, uh, you know it's really a leak and not uh, something dripping out of the uh, the framework of the motorcycle that got trapped. All right, we're going to start it up here and see uh, see what we get. I guess it's the moment of truth uh, or not. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm going to run around quick like a bunny and see if I got any leaks. coming out of there is coolant that I spilled on the exhaust manifold and uh, the exhaust pipe and it's burning itself off. That's what that smoke is. Uh, it's not a leak. So I put my hand in on the, uh, uh, the uh, cylinder fitting where I uh, connected the pipe and uh, uh, inspected the one here on the side of the bike and it's nice and dry. So uh, that part's going to be good, and this uh, smoke is burning off, so that's ethylene glycol coolant. I breathe a lot of vaporizer than I shouldn't have, but uh, I think we're good. Well, we took it out and rode it five or six miles. The fan cycled off two or three times, and uh, it's not leaking a bit. So I guess the mission accomplished on that anyway.